Next up on our schedule predictions, the Oregon State Beavers. We're going game by game with Carter Baines of BeaverBlitz.com. Beavers got seven wins in 2021. I think they could have more in 2022. Let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pack 12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play by play broadcaster. Thanks for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Conference of Champions. Like, comment, subscribe wherever you're listening to or watching the show. I appreciate everybody out there who has already done so, and I appreciate everybody who has been watching through all of these schedule predictions that we've been doing while I am uh, out of town for the last time this summer. This is the final one we're recording well ahead of time, and then starting with tomorrow's show, it'll be whatever the most recent breaking news is, uh, unless I decide to do another schedule prediction, but we'll just have to see how that all plays out. But this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. And there are uh, generally no terms and conditions when I bring on Carter Baines of beaverblitz.com, a senior editor and writer. I think the only condition is that uh, we have a good time. We get insightful commentary. And so far, that's happened uh, just about every time. And so we bring him back. Carter, good to have you on the show. Yeah, good to be back. This time I'm uh, I'm actually the one on vacation right now, <laughs> uh, recording here from Boston. So leaving the the Pac-12 footprint for uh, about two weeks as I, you know, get one last hurrah in before fall camp starts here in a couple of days uh, as we're recording on July 27th. Yeah, getting it done uh, well in advance. We we like to prepare. Uh, and, and by the way. Be careful there describing the East Coast as not Pac-12 territory. You never know. You, you, it's true. <laughs> you never know. It's very true. Uh, but we do know what Oregon State's schedule is going to be this year. It is certainly not the easiest one in the Pac-12, which is why I think they're over under win total, thanks to our friends at Bet Online, proud sponsor here at the Locked On Network, is uh, just five and a half. Now, it is up from what it was in 2021 going into the year. They had it set at four and a half this year, five and a half. So they see improvement in Corvallis the same way that I think we all do. The record reflects that. And when you watch the Beavers over the last few seasons, I think you see that as well. Uh, uh, But real quick, before we get to that season opener against Boise State, five and a half seems low to me. And even with the schedule, which as we'll get to is uh, not a cupcake, I I would take that over, Carter. Yeah, I would too. I mean, you know, an Oregon State team that won seven games last year and, you know, continues to show upward trajectory. I think the improvement has been noticeable and I I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Um, You and I have talked before about, you know, Oregon State taking the next leap and competing for a Pac-12 title. Uh, If they're going to do that this year, they're obviously going to win more than five and a half games. And I think even with the way this schedule shakes out with some tough road matchups, um, some tough non-conference matchups, even against non-Power 5 teams. I do think five and a half is is certainly on the low end. Um, and, and I'm surprised that it's not set higher at, at six, six and a half. Um, I, I think that's probably a little more fair just, you know, coming off of a, a seven win season. I, I think it's tough to predict Oregon State taking a slide after that. Yeah, I, I don't see it either. You've got your quarterback returning. You've got some preseason all Pac-12 conference uh, offensive linemen there. It, you've got a new defensive coordinator, a couple uh, all Pac-12 nominees by uh, Pac-12 media members on that side of the ball for Trent Ray. So I, I think there are a number of pieces that would lead me to feel pretty confident about taking them to go over five and a half. Game one is uh, not what you would call a a cupcake confidence booster. Uh, It is in Corvallis, which is good. You don't have to go to Boise and play on that dreaded blue turf, uh, which I actually think is cool. I think I'm one of the few people who thinks that. Most people find it tacky and annoying. Uh, I am definitely not one of those people. But 
Boise State is uh, coming in this game as an underdog in uh, the betting markets, actually. Last I saw, again, as we're taping this, it was uh, Oregon State minus four, probably because they're at home. I, I thought about this game for a while, Carter, because I'm pretty high on the Beavs coming into this season. Boise State, though, is a perennial Pac-12 giant slayer. Not that the Beavs are a giant per se, but like they are a Pac-12 beater. That, that is what they have been. Uh, the entire time, even since they've, you know, fallen down uh, from from their peak about a decade or so ago, 15 years ish. But Oregon State in a handful of matchups has not beaten them in Corvallis since 2003. It'll be their 10th all time meeting. Oregon State's actually five and four against Boise State all time. But since 2010, there have been three meetings and two of them have gone to the Broncos. I, I think you kind of have a coin flip game here and. Look, I, I really feel I, I feel very un- uncomfortable <laughs> picking either team in this game. I think Boise gets it done, but then it is uh, definitely an upward trajectory for the Beavs from there. I think this is the first of uh, of quite a few coin flips as as we you know start to to dive into the schedule. I I, I don't have a good read on it. You know, I, I think Boise State is. It's probably primed to be a, a top three team in the Mountain West again. Um, I know last year was a bit of a down year as they, uh, you know, they, they got settled under Andy Avalos as, as their new head coach. But I think coming into Corvallis, you know, makes it, I, I think you still give a bit of an edge to Oregon State there. Obviously, Oregon State's the power five team in this matchup. Um, so on paper, sure, yeah, the Beavers should be favored. Um, but we all know. You know, when you play a Mountain West school, it's no given, and it certainly wasn't for the conference last year. The Pac-12 really struggled, um, and of course, Oregon State's last game last year was a loss to Utah State in a bowl game. So you can't go out and just say, "Hey, they're playing a Mountain West school; they're going to win." But I do think the home field advantage here, um, in in what is otherwise a coin toss, you know, I think that makes me comfortable picking Oregon State to win Week One. Next week, they go at Fresno State, and I think this is the one they're going to win. Now, beating both of these teams, and then their FCS opponent is Montana State, which is uh, far from a a cakewalk itself, but you got two Mountain West teams here, and and if Oregon State is able to beat both and then beat Montana State and start 3-0, I think they would at the very least be flirting with cracking the top 25, I, I think you'd have a pretty solid case based on what Fresno and Boise did respectively and kind of how they're known as programs nationally to to get into that sort of range. I don't think the Beavs go 3-0 here. I, I think they beat Fresno State, and the reason is you've got a new-ish head coach. Jeff Tedford is returning, but you do have Jake Hayner there still. The game is uh, is going to be at Fresno State, which will make it a little tough. But I think that change in, you know, Tedford finding his footing again as a football coach, I'll take coaching continuity over the turnover there. So that's why I like it to be, you know, lose at home but win on the road. But either way, my, my best guess would be they go 2-1 and one here. They split with the Mountain West and, and beat Montana State. How do you see that Fresno State game playing out? So we've got it flipped here. You've got Oregon State losing to Boise State, winning at Fresno. I'm going to say they're going to win week one. Um, they're going to take care of the Broncos, but then go on the road and trip up in Fresno. I just think, you know, those are two tough matchups. And coming out of it 2-0 and is certainly within the realm of possibility. Oregon State could go 0-2. I mean, you know, these these games are complete toss-ups, I, I think, in my opinion. Um, Fresno State's offense, I, I think, scares me. You know, you look at an Oregon State defense that, while it does have a new defensive coordinator, a lot of returning talent, um, and some, some expectations that it's going to be a lot better, it still has to prove it. And I think this is probably the toughest test um, of the non-conference season as far as that goes. So, you know, Jake Hayner and, and that explosive offense, I think could create some problems for an Oregon State defense that still needs to prove it. And then, of course, you have to go on the road. It could be 110 degrees in Fresno in early September. Um, I, I don't think it's a comfortable game for Oregon State by any means. I do think it has the potential to be high scoring, and Oregon State's offense has what it takes uh, to put a bunch of points on the board. Um, but just like USC, Oregon State splitting those two Mountain West schools, um, I just have them falling to Fresno State. 
The, the reason I feel the way I do about those games is Fresno was very good last year, but I think they're going to take a step back in 2022. And Boise was down last year, and I think they're going to take a, a step up. So I think that's why we have that uh, that difference in opinion there. But everyone can agree that LinkedIn Jobs is a great way to get the people you want to interview faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. That's million with an M. Not billion with a B, but maybe the world population will be there one day. Who knows? LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn. There are a bunch of qualified candidates out there, and LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the one that best suits the job you need to fill. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So after the two Mountain West games, uh, which... Thinking back to 2021, now that uh, it comes into my head here, Carter, three straight games against the Mountain West for for Oregon State, which is an increasingly respectable group of five conference. I think it's always had uh, some level of credibility nationally because of teams like Boise, but San Diego State's on the rise. Utah State's had some uh, nice years in there as well, and some other schools who, who have popped from time to time. But then they come back home. They've got an FCS opponent, uh, or they come back to their home state, rather. They play Montana State, but that game is being played in Portland, right? Portland or Hillsboro? Yeah. Portland at Providence Park. Yeah, so they'll play Montana State there. Uh, it, it's hard to, to look at a Power 5 opponent that was above 500 in 2021 and say they'll lose to an FCS school. I, I think the Beavs will get this done. Shouldn't be a problem. But I wouldn't sleep on Montana State. As FCS football programs go, they were one of the two best in 2021, getting all the way to the national championship game before losing to uh, North Dakota State, who's a powerhouse themselves at the FCS level. I I think this will be one where the Beavs will be fine, but it is not one that that you just kind of gloss over and go, ah, Montana State, ah, whatever. No, it's a tough draw. And I mean, you know, for a school that's not playing a Power 5 opponent in non-conference, can it really get any more tough than, you know, two of the best teams in the Mountain West and then one of the two best teams in FCS altogether? I, I think that's about as tough as it gets if you're not going to play another Power 5 school. Um, and so to go 2-1 and one in this stretch, I think, sets you up really nicely as you enter conference play. I do think Oregon State gets the job done against Montana State. It might be closer for, you know, a half than Oregon State fans might hope. Um, you know, Montana State might get a little bit of confidence there and, and keep it close. But I do think Oregon State ultimately wins by a couple of scores in front of what should be should be a, a sellout crowd at, at Providence Park. I, I think they'll probably fill that place. Um, it'll be right about on par with capacity at Reeser Stadium as it undergoes renovations this year. Reeser, Reeser will be around 25,000, and, and that's about where Providence Park is this year. Um, and obviously Oregon State has a really strong fan base in Portland. So I'm expecting a good turnout for that game. I think the environment's going to be really cool. Um, and, and I think Oregon State gets it done against a, a pretty good Montana State team. Don't sleep on the Bobcat fans, by the way, uh, traveling down in, in numbers. They, they certainly love their their football up there in, in the state of Montana. And it's at the FCS level, but I, I guarantee you their passion is at a, a mm-hmm. Power 5 caliber. Let's get into conference play now. I think conference play is going to start with a bang. I think Oregon State's season is going to have a lot of ups, and it's going to have a lot of downs, and it's not going to be uh, consistent. You know, it's not going to be these five games are going to be strong, and then they're going to finish with four that will be really, really tough. I don't think it will be like that. I think we'll, we'll see a little bit of the inconsistency that, that was present in uh, 2021. Uh, it's just kind of been uh, a trend under Jonathan Smith so far. And I think until, you know, he wins at, at an eight to nine win level year in and year out, it's just something that, that we should expect for Oregon State. This game in Corvallis, I, I would like this pick more if you had a full research stadium. Uh, of course, you will not yet because the renovations won't quite be done for, for the 2022 football season for the Beavs. But I think they're going to upset USC. I, I do. I, you got it. You got to pick upsets somewhere. I know everybody will jump on and say, oh, my gosh, that's ridiculous. USC so much. USC, that like, is USC going to go 12-0? and 0? Are they, are they going to win every single game? The answer is no. 
And upsets happen every year in college football. That's why we call them upsets. If you go through your March Madness bracket and you just pick the top eight seeds in, you know, to to get to the Sweet 16, you're not going to have a very good Sweet 16 compared to everybody else. Like you got to be able to to go out there on a limb a little bit. And this is where I'm I'm putting faith in the Beavs and the history of USC going into that stadium as a big favorite and coming out with a loss. I think Oregon State can do just enough here to to find a way to win this game. I think it's a safe upset pick. And, and for the reason that you, you mentioned there, Oregon State's done it before a handful of times. You know, uh, USC does not like traveling to Corvallis for, for very good reasons. You know, every time they're a highly touted team or, or top ranked and they come up to Corvallis, it seems like they get one of their toughest challenges of the year. And I think Oregon State this year can bring that. Um, obviously, Oregon State last year went down to the Coliseum and, and absolutely took it to the Trojans, beat them by, well, I, I think it was 18. at least I think it was four, I think 45-27 was the final score. Sounds right. Yeah. So, I mean, to go to, obviously, different USC team, more talent this year, better coaching. Um, but still, you know, recently, Oregon State has done it. And um, I, I think, well, this is a very tough draw for Oregon State to open conference play. <laughs> it continues in, in the next game, as, as we'll see. Um, you know, I, th- I think if Oregon State's going to get off to a hot start in conference play, the one way to do it is by beating a team that's projected to finish in the top three, um, if not higher, in, in the conference. I think USC comes up to Corvallis and, and comes out with a win. Um, but I do think it's going to be – I think it's going to be close, and the atmosphere is going to be electric. You know, Oregon State fans are – going to be pretty hostile even though you know it might be only a, a half capacity stadium i think oregon state fans are pretty bitter towards usc right now and i mean for good reason you know if you're an oregon state fan um, i think seeing your team potentially left behind in the new college football landscape largely because of what usc did behind your back um, i think i think it gives you a, a pretty good reason to to be upset so it'll be a good environment again like i said with with you know that the other game up in portland um, I expect a, a, I expect a pretty tough matchup, uh, on both sides, but I, I do think USC comes away with this one. It's a great point about the fans. I, I mean, they always bring it when USC or, or Oregon is in town, but that extra level of, we really don't like these guys this year is 100% going to be there. You mentioned the tough start to conference play. I would describe it as about as brutal as it can be. I mean, it's borderline horrific and i mean i think if you're an oregon state fan you you kind of look at the conference and go what the heck is this like you start with usc at home okay but then you have to go at utah the following week it does not get a whole lot tougher unless you just threw in an oregon game on the road the next i mean why not toss it in and then uh, it's just i mean it's it's pretty brutal which is why i think that usc win will be so tough i'm not picking utah to lose at home this year what about you no, me neither. And, you know, for as far as crossover games go, you know, Oregon State playing against the the former South, obviously, you know, the, the divisions are only there for scheduling purposes this year. Um, Oregon State against the South, you get USC and Utah, and one of those is on the road. That is literally as tough as it gets uh, for crossover games. I don't think Oregon State goes into Salt Lake City and wins. I do think it can put up a fight. I mean, obviously the Beavers last year were the only Pac-12 team to beat Utah. Um, I I think, you know, there there are probably some fair questions about what Utah brings back defensively. You know, they lost a ton of talent. Um, A lot of their top uh, top tacklers, you know, Devin Lloyd, um, a couple of guys from the defensive backfield. Nephi Sewell at linebacker too. There's a lot of production in place there. Mika Tafua, I believe, is gone. He's gone, right? I'd have, I'd, I'd, I'd have to check with, uh, yeah, with yeah. JT of, of Lockdown Utes. So but you're, you're not the, wrong. The, point, the yeah. point being, you know, there's they have a lot to replace. I think if any program is, is suited to do it and replace that talent, it's Utah because it does it year in and year out. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the one way I see Oregon State potentially pulling this upset is, you know, if they can just rack up a ton of points. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, it's very possible looking at the first – five games of the schedule that Oregon state opens the year at one and four, but that if, yep. if, you know, it, it goes three and oh in non-conference, which is entirely possible. If it pulls off an upset against USC, like you are predicting, 
that's four and one against a really, really tough schedule. So I, I think the I think Oregon State's 2022 season is largely decided by these first five games. Yeah, I, I've got them at three and two because they lose here to Utah. I've got the upset at USC. I think they split with the Mountain West schools. But I, I had that same thought while you were talking, like, boy, Utah, USC, Boise State, Fresno State. And only a couple of those and two are at home and two are on the road. Like that could yeah. so easily be be one and four. And I don't think it would necessarily be a major indictment of Oregon State. They would not be living up to uh, the hype that we have for them at, at the moment. You and I on an individual level, certainly. But uh, I, I think schedule wise, it's definitely possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's here's another game. Uh, the following week, October 15th, we're in the middle of that uh, 10th month of the year now. Oh, excuse me, I, I skipped over one. Uh, they go at Stanford in a game that is increasingly becoming a matchup of two teams with very similar styles. You know, pro-style offense, power run first, and, you know, hope your defense can uh, can be better than it has been in the last couple of years. I think Stanford has a mild resurgence in 2022, I don't think they're they're going to be in as good of a place as Oregon State. Stanford may have the better quarterback in this game, but I think on a given day, Chance Nolan can outplay a number of guys in the Pac-12. I think Tanner McKee is among them, who who he could play better than on uh, on any Saturday. I think this is one where where Oregon State is. I think just going to be the, a more well-rounded team this year and get it done. Yeah, Stanford could very well have the best quarterback in this game, but I really question if the Cardinal have advantages at many other positions outside of that. Um, I I think for the first time in a very long time, Oregon State's going to match up against Stanford and say, we've got the better team. And I I think, you know, that's how you beat teams on the road. Um, It's not a hostile environment by any means down in Palo Alto. Um, but you know, it's, it's never easy to win on the road in college football. And and the best way to do it is just by frankly fielding more talented players. And I think Oregon state has that against the Cardinal this year, um, a decade long losing streak against Stanford came to an end last year. And I think Oregon state builds on that win and, and builds its own winning streak this year, um, going down and, and taking advantage of a team that's been down for a couple of years. And to your point, you know, could make somewhat of a resurgence, win a couple more games this year, but I don't think Stanford's going to be back um, to the level that, that we've seen out of David Shaw's program. Yeah. I've got them getting back to 500 and they were better yep. than uh, the Cardinal a season ago. The Beavs were, and I think they will be again in 2022. Then the next week, speaking of winning streaks in a particular matchup, it's been a rough go against the Cougs for for the Beavs. Jonathan Smith is yet to beat him. He's going to get them at home on uh, October 15th. I think at this point, the Beavs will be coming in off of a win against Stanford at 4-2. Probably not in the top 25, but still trending in a positive direction for the season. I think they come home and finally... You know, I, I don't know where this expression comes from, but get the monkey off their back. And I think they finally are able to to beat the Cougs, though. I like Washington State. And you mentioned and I bet you're about to agree with me here. This is one of those coin flip games in 2022. I'll, I'll take the beefs just because they're at home. If this is in Pullman, I'll go with the Cougs. But I think Oregon State that has come so close against Washington State in the last few years finally is able to get over that hump. Yep. I have Oregon State coming to coming into this game at 500 at three and three. Um, And this is really the Stanford and Washington state games are where the season I think starts to kind of look more in Oregon state's favor, the schedule at least, Um, you know, I think things get a little bit easier as far as road games go, you know, playing at Stanford, like I mentioned, that's a a fairly comfortable matchup on the road coming back and, and taking on Washington state. This is where you can really start to build momentum. You know, your schedule starts to look a little more manageable. Um, And, you know, again, with these long losing streaks, Oregon State snapped pretty much all of them last year. You know, USC on the road, Stanford in general, Washington in general. Uh, This, I think, is the year, finally, Jonathan Smith gets a win against Washington State. Oregon State snaps a a streak that's nearly a decade now, which is, it's, you know, frankly hard to believe with, you know, just the amount of success Oregon State's had against Washington State over the, you know, over the years. I do think that these two teams are going to be battling for the the second and third spots in the now defunct North Division, and this game will probably determine uh, which team is battling with Oregon 
uh, atop atop that you know traditional geographical uh, split there. So, yeah, I see Oregon State coming away with this one. Uh, it pushes them above 500 midway through the season, and I think it really, um, you know, I think it really boosts them in the in the Pac-12 standings as they start to get into the meat of conference play. Yeah, so I've I've got them five and two there. You've got them four and three. Uh, we don't need to spend a ton of time on Colorado. I, I think the Buffs are going to be worse than last year. I don't think the Beavs will stumble to them again. They have them at home. I, I imagine there's no disagreement there, right? If there's a blowout win in conference play, this is it. Yeah, I, I don't think you know Colorado's. Like you said, they're not going to be any any better than they were last year. To be fair, Oregon State lost on the road at Colorado last year. That was the game that got uh, defensive coordinator Tim Tibisar fired. Uh, but no, Oregon State shouldn't falter here. They miss Arizona, so this is kind of the you know this is yeah. the, all right. This is the team that you this should ne- beat up on. Ne- yeah, needs need needs to be a layup for them. I think it will be at home. Yeah. I've got the same sort of feeling the following week against Washington on on the road, who I think has uh, an overinflated win loss total in 2022 i think seven and a half is too high i I think they're in more of a rebuild than people realize i think they're going four and eight this year i i think the beeves will win this game and we've got a few more games to go to uh after this one but i think the beeves win this game but if you if you told me that somehow the bees kind of found a way to stumble here because it's on the road I could see it. I don't like that prediction, but I would not be shocked. Like if they lose to Colorado again this year, I'll be shocked. But if they go on the road, lose to Washington, I'd be surprised, but not shocked. Yeah, this one here. I mean, this is, you know, I think going down the going down the line here, probably coin toss number four. Um, I, I think, you know, Oregon State and Washington, as far as talent, um, just the general feel of where the program is at, I, I think are about on par. Um, but I do think, you know, the fact that Washington's breaking in a new coaching staff and, you know, trying to bounce back from what really was a a very chaotic year last year. And I I think quite disappointing, um, you know, that's not easy to bounce back from and, and, you know, what program better exemplifies that than Oregon state that's still working to, to come back from the Gary Anderson era. Um, you know, I do think that this is a good opportunity for Oregon state. Uh, to finally go up to Seattle and, you know, go into a really tough environment. You know Husky Stadium is going to be full and loud uh, and come away with a big win. You know, if if Oregon State really is going to take that next step and and reach the top tier of the conference, it's going to have to win games like this against, you know, a a middle-of-the-road team on the road in a loud environment. And I think, you know, if, if we're both predicting Oregon State to do that, and I think we are, this is a game that it should win. Uh, so I'll, I'll pick the Beavers here. The next week, they come back home uh, against Cal. In every season, typically, if you're not a, a perennial, you know, conference championship contender or college football playoff, uh, you know, rumored or speculation sort of team, you have a win where you outperform your record, and then you have a win where it's a pretty big let down. I mean, even teams that, that are close to that level tend to have that in college football, except for those handful of magical seasons where it all comes together, right? Like even uh, a Utah season ago, lost to San Diego State, but, you know, showed up when they needed to against Oregon, very nearly beat Ohio State. Oregon themselves, I think, punched above their weight, knowing what we know now when they went and beat Ohio State in Columbus, but then came back down to earth a ways in uh in the latter portion of the season against utah i bring all that up to say november 12th against cal at home carter i think this is oregon state's big letdown game i think the bears get them all right yeah i i think that's fair you know oregon state isn't oregon state's good enough to beat anyone on their schedule i think but i don't feel comfortable saying oregon state's good enough to avoid a letdown and I think if that letdown is going to come, it's going to come a week prior in Seattle. I don't think Oregon State loses to Cal two years in a row. I just don't see it, especially with this game coming at home. You know, Oregon State went 6-0 and at home last year. The home field advantage is there. Um, I know Oregon State lost to Cal last year. It was a game the Beavers should have won. It was a sloppy game, very, unca- very uncharacteristic of 
uh, what Oregon State put together over a full season last year. I don't think Cal's much better than it was last year, but I do think Oregon State is. Uh, so I'll pick the Beavers here again to the point I just made. You know, of these two games, I don't know if Oregon State is good enough to win both of them quite yet. You know, with a whole lot of, I don't think I can say with a whole lot of conviction that those are two wins. Uh, but if the loss is going to come, I think it'll be on the road against a Washington team that I see as being better than Cal. I, I could see that. I think Cal will take a step back. I think Oregon State's the better team, but I just think that that one uh, is ripe for a stumble. Let's finish up here in a, in about two minutes with the final couple of games at ASU at home against Oregon. I'm not loving the Sun Devils this year, and I think Oregon State coming off of a disappointing loss will be motivated to play well, and they'll want to carry momentum into uh, the game against their in-state rival the following week in Corvallis. I think they'll go to Tempe and beat Arizona State. I think they just have, uh, again, more program continuity there, and and so I'll I'll take that in, in that matchup later in the year because things could start to really head south for the Sun Devils. I, I think they're going to get to 500, but it'll be uh, kind of tough. And then the next week, I, I'm leaning Oregon in in that game because I, I think the Ducks still have a much more talented roster, though it is in Corvallis. That certainly changes the calculation a little bit. Um, but I say I'll lean. I, I don't say it with as much confidence a, as I would have a season ago. Okay, so if we're picking both games here, I'll say – you know, I think Oregon State's schedule is so front loaded with really tough opponents, you know, coin toss type games um, and unfavorable home road matchups. I think the middle of the season is where Oregon State, you know, makes its money, so to speak. But the last two games, it kind of returns to it has a very it has a very similar feel to the first half. Um, I don't know if Oregon State wins either of these games, to be honest. I think I would only be comfortable picking Oregon State against ASU if I knew the Sun Devils were going to be in complete turmoil. Um, If that's the case, Oregon State wins that game. If not, I do think what Arizona State has intact is pretty good um, and good enough to be a a top three team uh, in the Old South if, if they got a couple of breaks along the way. Going down to Tempe, obviously it's never an easy place to play. I would probably lean Sun Devils there just because I don't think I can bank on Herm Edwards losing his job and, you know, some of the roster pieces not falling into place. But there are so many unknowns there that it makes it a very tough game to predict. Um, And then with the last game, you know, the the rivalry in Corvallis, Oregon coming in. Oregon's the better team. It has been for, you know, the last 15 years almost. Uh, The Ducks will be favored in this game. They probably will win. But with this with all rivalry games and with this one in particular, obviously, yep. you know, all bets are off. Um, Oregon State is very capable of pulling off a win. And I think if Oregon State is going to upset anyone this year, it's either going to be USC or Oregon. So it's a, it's a winnable game for Oregon State. Like I said earlier, I think they're good enough to be anyone on the schedule. Um, I'm just not going to pick the Beavers in this one. Uh, but you know, losing the the last two games of the regular season, obviously, you know, it's it's a tough slide there. But the Beavers are still seven and five by my count going bowling. And they'd have a chance with a win in the bowl game to add on to their win total from last year with an eighth win. Yeah, you've got them um, uh, seven and five and over that five and a half over under win mark uh, provided by Bet Online. I've got them at eight and four. So good things should be coming for Oregon State here in 2022. Cannot wait for it all to play out. Carter Bain, senior editor and writer at beaverblitz.com. Good to talk to you as always, my man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, everybody. Our locked on Pac-12. That's what we call a production error here on YouTube because <laughs> I am a buffoon. Appreciate everyone listening. See you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day.